stepped on the field, a warrior so bold, center of the team, a story to be told, two-time All-State, he gave it all he had, in the game of life, he always played it glad, Reverend Dream, oh can't you see, a soldier of faith, a champion to be. Now you were coming in tonight, this is Reverend Dream. Uh, tonight we will be doing a few different things. First, we're going to start with a prayer. I always like leading you in with a prayer or leaving you out with a prayer. And uh, I just got that feeling the Holy Spirit told me that I need to pray for somebody tonight. I don't know who you are, but you do. You are battling demons with inside of you. I don't know what the demon you have is, whether it's addiction, whether it's um, mental, whether it's uh, uh, perversion, whatever the demon is, we need to see if we can get it out of you to where that God can allow it to be able to work inside of you. So let's do that first before we get into the meat and potatoes. So if you would, take off your hat, grab an iced tea, sit down there and listen to me as I pray to the Holy Spirit. But as you know, if you've watched me for any certain time, I don't like to pray online. So I will turn my camera You'll see an empty seat that usually contains the raccoon wrestler herself. But she's inside wrestling the kitties. And uh, tonight it's just me and you. As uh, We're going to do a bunch of devotionals. We're going to stack them in to where that you'll always have a devotional to hear from me. So if you see me in the same clothes, don't think nothing of it. It's probably the same day I'm doing it. But uh, I will be out here sweating. And I'm sweating for you. And remember that. So for those who is lost that has not found their way yet, maybe this prayer is for you. I don't know why the Holy Spirit led me in, because I still have a couple that I could have put out. For some reason, he told me, get in that car today and do your lessons that you need to do. And listen to me and follow through my words. So here I am. So if you'll bow your head, take up your hat gear like I'm fixing to. As soon as the camera moves, because I don't want you to see how nappy I am right now. But uh, I do want to give respect to God as I do. So here we go. As you can see, the raccoon wrestler is not there. And there's the hat. So for those who said he didn't take off his hat, yes, I did too. It's in my lap. So here we go. <sighs> Heavenly Father. I come to you tonight for you told me to get into this car and pray this prayer. I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to come in and lead it so that your ears may hear the words that you need to hear. Father God, there are lost souls out in this world that needs to hear the word of you, the rules and the laws and the ways that you expect us all to be. Even though we're going to fall short and fail because we are sinners, and we're in a sinful world. We know, Father God, that you hold our hand when we do. We place you first in all we do or say, so that when we do fail and fall, you will catch us and carry us the rest of the way. But being so, Father God, we strive daily to ensure that we are more Jesus-like every each and every day. Father God, I know that we can never achieve what he did, but it is up to us to be able to struggle and try. But we know we place it all at your feet so that you help us along life's way. You protect us and watch over us. You guard us and, and allow us to be who you chose us to be when you made us. Father God, for those lost souls out there that is hearing this today, I ask for salvation. I ask that you lead them to you, Father God, they may hear the pleading call of this old preacher man. 
Allow me to beg for this salvation for them. If they don't want it for themselves, allow them to hear it through my words that they may see that it is their only choice today and today only. For tomorrow is not promised to no one. So, Father God, I ask you to knock on their doors loudly so that you may be able to receive another spirit to your bosom. And for those who are battling addictions, whether it's alcoholism, whether it's drugs, whether it's sexual addiction, food addiction, whatever addiction that draws you away from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, I pray this off of you today. I pray that Satan himself has to bear that burden for you. For it is only him and his, his ways that kills, steals, and destroys that leads you to that way. I want to pray tonight that all the addictions be cast out upon you. I cast them out. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Out of you I cast these addictions. Father God, if it be your will tonight, lead us to a better tomorrow if tomorrow ever comes. And if not, allow us to be where we need to be so that when we see you, we are in your bosom. In these things we pray in Christ Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, let's get down to the meat and potatoes. Tonight we're going with Proverbs. We're going to hit up chapter 22. So those who are following along in the Bible, come on over to chapter 22 in Proverbs and let's read along. Of course, I'm reading the King James Bible. I believe in it. I believe it holds true to the essence that I believe. And uh, whatever you decide to read, then that's on you. But know that man creates different versions of different Bibles sometimes to please their own selves and not to please God. So, with that being said, we're going to continue. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. The rich and the poor meet together and the Lord is the maker of of them all. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but a simple pass on and are punished. You know, have you ever been that person that knew what sin was? You was prudent knowing that this is not what you're supposed to be doing. This evil is not supposed to be upon you. And you hide. You don't let it find you. That is a prudent man. That is someone who is living the way God intended him to live. Where a simple man says it's okay. I'll be all right. And then you're punished for it. Always remember that, man. You will always, if you stand before a judge, be either found guilty or innocent. If you are prudent, then you will be simply innocent. Whereas if you are guilty, then guilty you'll be charged. By humility, and fear of the Lord or riches and honor in life. The first step of wisdom is fear of the Lord. And it's not because you are to be scared of him, but to respect him. Thorns and snares are in the way of the forward, forward that he doth keep his soul shall be far from them. People that sin, their life is full of thorns, full of snares by Satan himself. He places it in to capture your essence, your spirit, your soul. 
If you fall for them, the things that are glitz and glamour, the things that he places there before you, then you're guilty. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. That's the truth. Couldn't be no more true. When I was a child, I was taught how to love God and walk close to him. I walked so close to Jesus that he kicked up the dust and my feet become dirty. As I grew older, I drew nearer to him. I accepted him back, even though he was never left or never gone. It was my ideology that drew myself away. But it was also his love that drew me back and drew me closer again. The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is a servant to the lender. Have you ever seen the rich man? There's one rich man that might be president one day. He rules a lot of people. A lot of people that are underneath him. But the people that borrow from him become a servant. I won't mention his name or who he is. But there's a lot of rich people out there that's trying to run for president, trust me. They're all richer than me, whether they're male or female. But I'm no slave to none of them. He that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity, and the rod of his anger shall fail. He that hath a bountiful eye shall be blessed, for he giveth of his bread to the poor. This is true. I do that, don't you? I pray you do. Do you give to the poor? If you've got more than they do? Or do you keep it and say, that's how come you got what you got? Let's continue reading. Cast out the scorner, and contention shall go out. Yea, strife and reproach shall cease. For he loveth pureness of heart. For the grace of his lips, the king shall be his friend. The eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge. And he overthroweth the words of transgressors. When I come out here, I'll be real careful not to speak my words or thoughts. I allow the Holy Spirit to speak what he needs to through me. So that I know that the knowledge that I have here, that I give to you is pure. It's like honey that I love so well. If I don't give you what's right, what the Holy Spirit gave me, then I'm giving you wrong. We have to always remember, guys, we're doing it for the Lord and not for ourselves. If you were doing this work for God, for your wealth, to pat your body, to, to make you fat and rich. Sorry message then you're doing it for the wrong if you're a prosperity preacher who says give 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 when the price is already paid didn't jesus say it is finished the slothful man said there is a lion I shall be slain in the streets. The mouth of a strange woman is a deep pit. He that is 
arbored of the Lord shall fall therein. Foolish is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Nowadays, that passage right there is forsaken so much. Parents, yeah, I'm stepping on toes, would rather send their, their children to the streets to the school for correction, but don't correct them at home. You allow a child to go wild, and a wild child you have. When he grows up and tries to make it in the world, he'll fail. Why? Because he's not being given the, the rod of direction. That rod, you spoil the rod, you spare, you spare the rod, you spoil the child. You ever heard that one? Well, it's true. A lot of parents say, well, I've never spanked my child. My child is just perfect. Well, he might be perfect in your eyes. But what about when he gets away from you? How perfect he is in your neighbor's eyes or your pastor's eyes or the drug dealer's eyes that you don't see. How perfect is he then that you don't know? Hmm. He that oppresseth the poor to increase his riches and he that giveth to the rich shall surely come to want. Have you ever seen them poor people? And you say, hey, I'm going to give you this to make your life better. Do you think you're given a reward later in life? Or do you think you're giving up your wealth for something that's stupid? Well, I want to tell you, give it up to the poor before you give it to the rich. Because if you don't, if you don't, you shall need more in your life. Then will you have it? Probably not. Because you see, the poor ain't going to give it back to you, or the rich ain't going to give it back to you. But if you go back to that poor man that you passed on the street that you did not give nothing and you ask him, hey, mister, can you spare a dollar? I am 99.9% .9 willing to bet you if that poor man has it, it's yours. Why? Because they have compassion of each other. They know what life is truly about and how difficult it can become. They won't see you do without because they done without themselves. If you've been rich all your life and you've never had to struggle, what happens when you first struggle or stumble? Do you accept it and grow from it, learn from it? Or do you just shut down and, and throw a tantrum tantrum. Believe life has just treated you wrong, even though you've had so much and gave so little. Well, I don't know how you feel about the matches that I just laid on you. I pray it gave you a little compassion to look around your surroundings the next time you see that homeless man that maybe you'd pass by because he wasn't as clean as you, his clothes didn't meet to your standards, maybe he didn't look the way you thought he should look. Be careful because the person you entertain might have been an angel that was just testing you. 
to see how much empathy you had. This is Reverend Dream. I hope you enjoyed this message. And if you did, please, by all means, share it, subscribe it, tell somebody else. Let your family know that Reverend Dream is out telling the truth. He's spreading the gospel. He's trying to win spirits one prayer at a time. If it's something you like, subscribe. That way you catch my next one. What will the message be? Only the Holy Spirit knows. But I promise you, it'll be a doozy. We love each and every one of you. Don't forget to pray. God bless.